Easy. He's the only one who sees the big picture. He sees the future. This plan, if this fails, our brothers are going to be gunning for you. I've never been afraid to swing. God help us all. My in season three, we're really rooted in realism, but there's elements that are more stylized. I'm just excited for everyone to get to see all the heartbreak and joy and sorrow and beauty. It's dynamic this season. New York. They've been making TV for a very, very long time. Not a lot of things have actually changed. Such a crusted over old boy network. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, we can't do this. Oh, we have to center punch. Like, whatever it is. And I never felt comfortable in it. I never felt part of it. She gets about here, she's gonna take off her helmet. Elgin knows exactly what he wants with the feeling, the tone, the visuals. And so everything this season, we've taken it to the next level. Vanessa, Joey Smith, our DP, who's just my road dog. From the look to the overall culture of the show is something that we really spend a lot of time talking about and working on together. And I say it all the time, I do not have the grammar to be of help to you. All I know is this is how I want to feel. Action. Movies and TV can change the universe. There's so many things that I've tried to express. Grief, joy, beauty, pain, and that's what we're trying to do visually. For season three, I think that we're really rooted in the characters. You now go home with them. And so with that, we've also created looks within their home. Elgin really wanted the home environments to be very warm. So anytime we're in a space like the clubhouse or Felipe's house or anywhere where it's homey, it's warm, welcoming feeling. That's with the lighting, with the color temperature of the camera, to make it feel as though this is their space where they feel comfortable. It's like a private invitation for the audience to come sit down and be intimate with these characters. In the Galindo house, that was a whole other feeling of wanting it to feel very cold so that it doesn't feel like home because their home life is falling apart this season. I want this to look like you found an old photograph with any, and trying to figure out well, how can we do that? How can you have those feelings come across? How deep can you go with the blacks? Does that do it? How can you make these different certain colors pop? Is that what does it? Constructing the scene, everything is how you want to see it as a viewer. You're looking at it through the lens of the viewer. In that scene with Coco and Hope, we're in there with him. We're right in his face. When he looks down, the camera tilts down, and we're finding everything kind of as he's finding it. Elgin and I came together and decided on certain lighting. So a lot of our lighting is big, single source lighting. And so a lot of the shadows become really deep, and the, the light falls off into the background. We also, this season, let things live within the space. So it allows you to have really big wides. So if we're out in the desert or out with the guys riding, the space of it allows you to sit in it. And we just sit in these wides that kind of make you feel a little uncomfortable. Elgin has a very high standard of excellence and everything is purposeful and everything is towards this larger artistic vision that he has. I don't know what anybody else feels, but at least to myself, where is it where I feel this thing in my gut and I can look at it snapshot, I can look at a frame of our show and it can break my heart. Everything visually, whether it's through the operating or through the lighting, it's just, we've just leveled up a little bit. But at the end of the day, you have to tap into, am I feeling goosebumps? That's very much the look and feel of Mayans. Somebody talk to BP. The tunnel and checkpoint play are blown. The sound this season, like so much, is really more about getting to real emotionality. We wanted the music to reflect who these characters are. Music always meant so much to me. I used to play, obviously, like punk rock and hardcore, like since I was a kid and I played in bands. Everything like comes back to music for me, so I have like a metronome 
like the way that I write. So I have these things and it has to have this rhythm. For Elgin, I wanted to have a rhythmic element, but that wasn't percussion and it wasn't synth. You have your idea of what the music is gonna be, and then you talk to the director and come to an understanding of what the music's gonna be, but then it's not until you're getting in there and seeing the images that you really feel it. I've always wanted to work with David. Mola Pedrita, his band, is one of my favorite bands. And so when I got this opportunity, it was just like, it just seized it. Just get a unique sound, like these very low, low octave sounds, but with most of the low frequencies gone. The goal from talking to Elgin was definitely to bring the sense of melancholy and desperation and loss in their lives to go along with the grittiness and the toughness and the kind of badass aspects is to really stress a lot more the emotional hardship that this life has taken on everybody. In the final product, this will be pretty low in the mix, but it, to me, it's still like a great starting point. And it's a static thing musically, so I can, it leaves me a lot of leeway to play piano over to kind of come up with some things and letting this kind of set the key in the mood. He's a incredibly talented musician and just totally understands what we're trying to do. To have an individual we can connect with on so many parts has been incredible. I'm definitely trying to have some Western vibes. And I feel like there's a real like angel of death Western theme. We talked about having the Southwestern desert sound, but only after I started working did I start thinking in terms of having some like Western type motifs. And then I started thinking of the characters more like Western archetypes. Sometimes it's more like hinting at emotions than actually being emotional. It's almost asking the viewer to look deeper. Where they're doing the run, the tunnel at Vicky's house, and then the cops show up. It's about a six minute sequence of full score. Loads here, how are we looking? We got about two minutes. It was a pretty different vibe than we were doing with the rest of the score. And I actually thought like, I would like to try a little more of a heart racing action thing here. Prospect, hit him up with the truck. But I still kept all the same instrumentation that I had going on. So it was an interesting test for me to see if this was gonna be a sonic palette that we could use. It's been incredible to watch. Heartbreak and joy and sorrow, and I'm so excited about what he's done. Born to Ride is sponsored in part by Rubenstein Law, 1-800-FL-LEGAL, representing riders since 1988. Offices throughout Florida, 1-800-FL-LEGAL. Kim Coates, I play Tick Traeger, Sons of Anarchy, and you are watching Born to Ride TV. <laughs> This fails. Our brothers will be gunning for you. You swing big, miss big. I've never been afraid to swing. Yeah, I 
figured you'd say that. This is not Mayan season one, season two. This is Mayan's Alger James. Whenever you're ready, leave it all out on the field, man. This is it. And action. Elgin this season has been a blessing for us. He's a Mayan. He's our brother. Just having him on set, I would run through a brick wall for him. Elgin is so gracious on set. He's made that front and center for the whole season. Elgin gives you such a sense that that's all being taken care of. And you can focus on your thing because he's focusing on everything else. He started off sending a lookbook using photographs, paintings that elicited creative and emotional response. And the opening line was, this is not TV, this is poetry. And cut! Oh, let's cut it. Algin compared this season to poetry because you're really trying to, to let people speak from the heart and speak from the spirit. With poetry, you're able to express in just this little economy of words, and it breaks through to something else. And the poetry that I love will breaks through your brain, that's like straight to your heart. Algin has really been through the mud like me. The Mayans is an outlaw club. And for somebody to write about an outlaw club that doesn't really know it on a personal level, it's not the same as a person that has really experienced it. And Algin has. There's dudes on the show who I was in prison with. You know, even Richie Cabral, like I met on a prison reform panel. Elgin has lived the life. He comes from a dark place. And me being from that kind of life, I see the realism, how it's written. I think Elgin is I think such a, an incredible storyteller. I think it's so moving. I think everything is towards this larger artistic vision that he has. His writing is so unique, and there's so much depth to it. It just feels natural coming off the tongue. You good, man? I'm good. Uh, action! All of us make this show, and this show has all of our fingerprints all over it. And we're going to express these things that are really, really dark and really, really uncomfortable and scare most people. That is the poetry, whether it's the lighting, whether it's the music, whether it's the sound. Everybody, man, it's just bringing their A-game right now. There's no fear. I thank Elgin for letting me do that. From the DP, from how we're filming it, from the camera lenses to the view, the tone, what you're going to see on screen, it's very different. It's art, and it's very poetic. If Instagram is your thing, we're there. We're everywhere. Follow us at hashtag Born to Ride Motorcycle Media, your number one motorcycle resource. Saturday, July 24th, it's coming. Born to Ride's Great American Moto Fest. And, folks, it is uh, officially summertime, Dave. Yes. June 1st. Welcome, Welcome to Born to Ride Live, everybody. Here we are, Dave and Dave. Yes, indeed. Do I look a year older? Do I look older to you, Dave? No, you really look as, I, as fresh as a daisy. I have aged a year since we last spoke, my friend. Yeah. Well, you let me don't just tell you, it. from what I can remember, it was one <laughs> fabulous weekend. <laughs> Wonderful. Good to hear. Good Lots of fun and formality, but you know, I want I kind of want to start out on a on a serious note. You know, we, we normally uh, talk about uh, uh, our our brother bike, especially when we get into talking about Nefarious James, and of course, the yeah. last few articles that he's had have been pretty serious. But I really want you to think about this sticker. Um, think motorcycle. Of course, we've teamed up with our friends at Rubenstein Law to just try to bring awareness because uh, just this morning I got a call from my daughter. She was just in tears and bawling. Um, lost a very close friend of hers uh, on a motorcycle from somebody else's negligence. Two people over the weekend within three miles of where I live here in, uh, in the Clearwater area in Florida, uh, people just turned right in front of these guys, and we've lost uh, two of our brothers, and uh, one of the gentleman's wife is in critical condition in the hospital. Of course, our thoughts and prayers go out to, um, to all of them. We hear about this all the time. So, you know, again, we really want you guys to think motorcycle, think motorcycles when you're in your cage and you're cruising around, uh, even if you're on another bike for that matter. I mean, if you're doing anything other than driving your vehicle, if you're driving impaired, uh, that's another thing that we got to, you know, we just got to, got to put an end to, you know, if this, and if this message saves one life, well, it's certainly worth it, but, uh, I just, you know, I just felt that, uh, 
that needed to be how we opened the show today. Just folks, think motorcycle, will you please? Please. Yep. For the sake yeah, of all the rest of us that are uh, still out there on our, our two wheels. Yep. And thank you to uh, Nefarious James for getting us started on that because he had the same thing happen uh, not long ago. Um, yeah. And he did a great editorial about that in last month's uh, issue of Born to Ride. Mm -hmm. So sorry for the uh, the downer opening, folks, but please think motorcycle. Keep your eyes and ears open. Yes. Whether you're on two wheels or four wheels or whatever you're doing out there. Whatever you're driving, folks, and please do not uh, drive impaired. Don't do it. That is right. Put yourself, as, as my buddy, uh, the single sling calls it, get a Uber. <laughs> Wait, what? Did you say the single sling? Yes, we call him uh, the single sling or tetherball. He answers to both. Tetherball. Yeah. That's a story yeah, I'll have. a biker that, friend that, that, that we... Uh, that's a story I'll have to tell you off the air, Dave. <laughs> I had I had a biker friend named uh, Uninard. Is it one of those kind of things? It probably is. I'm thinking it's probably right along those same lines. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Well, I'll tell you what, friends. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the wonderful folks at the Mayans uh, TV series for the, the footage that we had uh, earlier. And what we're coming into is pretty fascinating because there is a, a movie that uh, Ron Galletti, who owns Born to Ride, mm -hmm. he was a big part of a movie called Nation's Fire. Oh, it's, yeah. Uh, with Chris Grotti. That's correct. And so we're going to see a little bit about that coming up here in just a moment. And nice. also a once in a lifetime, one of a kind, great interview coming up with the legendary Bruce Dern. Now, you've got Money some Dyer. pretty good history with Bruce, do you not? Yes. Yeah, actually, you know, Bruce Dern uh, started out his career as an actor right? Uh, being in, you know, these B-movies that uh, were mostly biker films. He was in over a dozen different biker films right. back in the day, and... Um, he was in real good company because these were movies that had Peter Fonda and Jack Nicholson and uh, Dennis Hopper and uh, good Lord, uh, Michael Parks and all kinds of different actors that uh, Roger Corman made a lot of low budget films. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the great thing about working for Roger was that you would get to make movies. Uh, and right. when I was a young guy, uh, first hit in California, he right. gave me a job and I actually worked with Roger on a bunch of movies. And uh, the, the deal was this. Um, Roger owns everything. You own nothing. Right. But you will make movies. There you and go. We and we did. We made a whole lot of kind of kind of crappy films. <laughs> hey, listen, as long as you uh, as long as there's motorcycles involved, what else could you need? It was really fun is what I'll tell you. And uh, besides all that, I also want to remind you folks, Motorfest is coming up July 24th. Don't you forget it. Put That's it on your day planner, month. buddy. Just put it. Yep. Just mark the whole day off on your calendar for that one. That's going to be fun. That's right. Because also in this show, uh, we'll be talking to Rob our brilliant rodeo manager who's going to tell us about all the wonders that will await you at Motifest coming up. There you go. There so you all go. that and more is just a wink and a blink away from you. I think uh, I just got my notes finally came up. Uh, yep. <laughs> I think uh, we said everything that we have to say. I think you're right. And I think we should just get to it, Dave. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Born to Ride Live. We'll be back. Saturday, July 24th, it's coming. Born to Ride's Great American Moto Fest.
am Gloria Nation. You skipped bail. I'm here to take you in. I wanted to follow my daddy's footsteps, so I started my club, Heaven's Fire. Daddy was my strength. It was Daddy who helped raise Thomas after I was deployed overseas. Thomas, my world, my heart. I want to work with you. This is not a life I want my daughter to be involved in. Too much blood, Mom. Once you cross that line, there is no turning back. I can do this. Tomorrow, you will get your orders. Make sure you come right home after school, OK? at the location. It's being handled. Life is about courage. It takes courage to get back on the bike. Basically, uh, bikes. Um, I started my career doing a lot of, well, not my career, but early in my career, I did about 11 biker films in five years, most for Roger Corman. And uh, we had a group of us, four or five of us, Jack Nicholson, myself, Dennis Hopper, Peter Fonda, uh, Michael Parks. We would be the guys that would do the biker movies. And there was a lot of acid and stuff in those movies, so they were kind of drive-in movies. Um, nobody's ever made a really great motorcycle movie. Um, ours were kind of exploitation movies for drive-ins, and that's what they did. And we'd make them for about 160000 in 10 days, and they'd make 5 or $6 million in the drive-in. And they made a company called American International Pictures, AIP, and Roger Corman. Um, what attracted me to this material was the dialogue and the care for relationships that weren't working, that were broken. And from what you just saw in there, that these people would carry on like that in front of a seven-year-old little kid is disgusting. But uh, I've had people in my life that have done such things, and I'm sure a lot of other people have too. And I like the fact that somebody wrote that down with a passion to get that on screen. People see it. I don't know what uh, Tom's background is, but trust me, there's something going on there that we saw in this movie. And it makes sense, and it works. And the most interesting thing about it is it's audience oriented because there's no age group that should see this movie except anyone between 10 and 80 or 90, I'm 80. So uh, it, it's just because, and the bikes aren't what the movie's about. The movie's about behavior and people and heart and courage and this girl being out to go out there and get done. When I was 11 years old, my mother said to me, how come you never come home after school? Your track practice, because I was a big runner, is over by 4.30, quarter five. You're never home till 6.15. What do you do? Uh, I didn't have a good relationship with my mother. I said, well, I go out and do stuff. I have a friend, I go out and do stuff. Well, what, what do you do? This more important than coming home and being on time for things here. And when I, in my house, you had to wear white gloves to dinner and dress in a suit every dinner for 18 years from the time I was three years old on. And I said, i tell you what I do, mother. Me and my friend like up. And that's what I loved about whoever wrote this script. Because he may have waited till later in his life, but he's saying, hey folks, if you want to go these kind of routes, this is what can happen. And it is people that, because of their human spirit, rose above it and, excuse the expression, but got us done. You know what I mean? 
And uh, the whole thing that I say in the movie about one man, one horse, and this is what it is, you know, um, is synonymous with the bikers. The thing that's neat about it is uh, this is not a Western, but it is what the Westerns were about. This is a Western because it's still on motorcycles, which is why people left East St. Louis every April and went 15 miles a day in a covered wagon or on a horse by himself all the way to Sacramento. And not for gold. This was even before gold. They went because they knew the following phrase, if you take the song, and that's what this movie's about in the bike culture. The bear went over the mountain. The bear went over the mountain. And what do you think he saw? What he saw was a chance for a bigger tapestry, like the pioneers saw. That's why when these guys get on bikes, whether the old lady's on the back or not, they are doing something no one else is really doing. They're getting out there, and they're not risking their lives, but they're risking to find what they really want to find. It's like in Catching the Rye, Holden Caulfield says he wanted to just grab the brass ring. That's all these folks want to do. And they just don't want to be hassled by people on the way. And all the negativity about bikers and outlaw motorcycle gangs and everything else. Uh, all the bikers I was around, and I was around from Sonny Barger to all the Hells Angels in Oakland and San Bernardino and everything else, and the bona fide outlaw guys. And on my jacket in this movie, it says 1% here. That's because they're the 1% of society that thinks they don't belong or don't fit. And all they want you to do is just accept them. They want to be accepted. Everyone I knew in the days we were going in the 60s were all Korean veterans. And they were the most patriotic guys I ever knew. Their biggest day of the year was Memorial Day. You know, now they don't even celebrate it on Memorial Day. But all the buckers do. They wait till the 30th of May, and that's when they celebrate it, because that's when it is. So there's, there's a history here that we, that in the movie makers and the, and the crew and the productivity, I mean, I'm here one day, and I saw 20 days of work done in a day, because everybody pulled their oar. And it's very rare to see. And we're talking wildcat crews. I mean, I don't know where all you came to. I, I don't think you've done 10 movies together. You know what I mean? And it's a joy to see, and it's a delight. And there's an energy here that is really interesting. But the biggest thing is the story itself and the pictures that the story will show you. Because the man didn't make a movie about bikers. He made a movie about people. And as long as he stays that way, that kid will do big stuff. And as long as people like you have faith in a kid like that, to hang in there with him. He's got problems. He's got to learn about time constraints. He's got to learn about he doesn't have as much to spend as he think he does. But he molded a group of people together in a short period of time that were just like a team. I had never heard anybody yell today. I never heard an argument. I never saw anything. It was just smooth. That is really rare. So if the folks get out and see this movie when it gets out, and you got to get it out there, and it will get out there. I don't know who you go to and show it distributors, but any distributor would be nuts not to pick up a movie like this because this is money, you know. I'm not saying it's going to win Oscars or anything like that, but it's going to get the folks' attention. And not just the folks that go to biker movies, but people that want to know why we behave what, why, why, the way we do in times of crisis. And that's what this does. And you have a little girl's point of view, an older man's point of view, a guy in prison's point of view, and the city or wherever it is point of view of who those people are in their community. And that's really all I have to say, but that's what you got here. You know, you got lightning in a bottle. If you carry it on from here, you know, you're great.
nothing left to gain. Oh, oh. You can't be so wrong when it feels so right. You can't be so wrong if I wanna be an outlaw. It would be so wrong if I could never find you. The red, white, and blue in the hearts of me and you. Hey, yeah. All the miles leave a trail. All our brothers and sisters never fail. what it is true bikers because what that is is whether they're guy bikers girl bikers whatever it is they're banding together for a common cause peace love and above all else unity Yeah, the wind 
so right Can't be so wrong if I wanna be an outlaw Gloria Nation. You skip bail. I'm here to take you in. I wanted to follow my daddy's footsteps, so I started my club, Heaven's Fire. Daddy was my strength. It was daddy who helped raise Thomas after I was deployed overseas. Thomas, my world, my heart. I want to work with you. This is not a life I want my daughter to be involved in. Too much blood, man. Once you cross that line, there is no turning back. I can do this. Tomorrow, you will get your orders. Make sure you come right home after school, OK? What did you do? What did you do? He's at the location. It's being handled. Life is about courage. It takes courage to get back on the bike. You can go on the High Seas Rally with Joey. Joey, you're killing it. Yeah, we are, we are. We are uh, the High Seas Rally. We're the world's only biker rally on a cruise ship. Uh, we take over the entire cruise ship. We fill it with bikers, we fill it with vendors, we fill it with bands, and we have a good time. We party, we're, we're raising money for a couple good causes. We have our High Seas Rally dialysis fund. We're also tied in with the Wounded Warrior Project, so a lot of good causes. We give away around $200,000 worth of cash and prizes. So Molly Hatchet is one of the bands we're going to have on board. We're really excited about that. Yeah, I'm part of the, uh, the production team and the programming team, so we kind of decide when the bands are playing, uh, what shows are happening, all the vendor expos and all that kind of stuff. We plan all the parties, so that's part of the reason I come out to a lot of the rallies is I can really talk to the guests and tell them what's going to be happening on the cruise. You know, we're talking with Trace Atkins and all the different events he wants to do and, and, and everybody that's going to be on the cruise. So it's fun. And then, you know, we've got bike builders as well. Our, our main bike builder is uh, Xavier Muriel of Providence Cycle uh, Works, and he's uh, building us uh, a custom bike that will be given away on the ship. So everybody who has a cabin on the ship is automatically entered to win, and someone's walking away with the High Seas Rally 21 bike so that's pretty cool get on the ship don't miss it uh www.highseasrally.com you can sign up to win a free cabin there as well find out all about it find out about all of our discounts military discount first responder discounts and, and see what it's all about come check it out thank you joey so that's it guys the high seas rally you don't want to miss it get aboard that ship get out there and have some fun hey y'all it's trace atkins one reason I'm excited about the High Seas Rally is their commitment to supporting our military and first responders. I'm proud to be helping High Seas Rally's Salute to Service mission, raising money for Wounded Warrior Project, and celebrating our heroes on the front lines. I'll see you in October 2021. The demand for Harley-Davidson's is at an all-time high. People are buying Harley-Davidson's as fast as we can stock them. That makes your bike worth more than ever before. Have you ever wonder what that bike sitting in your garage is worth? It's never been easier than right now. Come visit us at Crystal Harley-Davidson, located in Homosasso, Florida, or visit us at crystalharley.com. All right. Well, yes. Oh. All right. Welcome oh. back.
Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Bye, Going right guys. live, as seen on uh, most of these Facebook channels and or all of our other social media. And speaking of which, yes, uh, if you're not a member of our Facebook family, may we just kindly ask why? What are you doing? Why? why what are you doing? Just we need for, to know. It costs you nothing to be yes, part of our family. Not one red <laughs> cent. Not only that, we'd like to know. Where you're listening, we kind of like to know what you're right. We'd like to know a little bit about you, if you don't mind. Why? Share. Sharing is caring, Dave. Why won't you just join us? Just join us. Facebook family, make sure you check out boardtoride.com. It's got links to all of our other channels. And, yeah. you know, uh, it's our Facebook, our Instagram page. You, you can check out all of the back issues of Born to Ride right there at your, at your fingertips. At your so, you know. That's it. Yes, That's your back. Hey. That's it. Do it. Yeah, do it. All we're asking. Uh, tons of things that we're giving away. And speaking of giving away, Dave. Yes, yes. What the high seas news. rally? We have big what news. What can I do possibly to get on the high seas rally? Let me tell you about this, friends. We have got big breaking news right here mm -hmm. on Born to Ride Live that you have mm -hmm. never heard before in your life. And mm -hmm. tell you what it is. You know, Motorfest. We got that coming up July, right? Mm -hmm. We are going to be giving away July 24th at Motofest. You, yes. you yes. there. Yes. You can win a tell cabin me, tell for me. two. Cabin for two? Ultimate, yeah, the ultimate cruise. We're yeah. talking about the high seas rally, the best biker rally in the seven seas. We're going to go to the Caribbean. We're going to have a whole bunch of fun. We're going to spit up most likely right right a cabin for two will be given away at motofest so that's that's reason right there to come to motofest that's that's more than reason enough to come to motofest folks right. Do it. just get out there uh in all you know just like you say for checking out uh, some of our social media stuff getting out there uh yep. being in the know with all you know as, as far as anything as far as bikers go you're not going to find it anywhere else uh, in more detail than you are right here at Born to Ride and BornToRide.com. A cabin for two. Okay, free. And it can be, yeah. you know, you and someone else. That's it. You know. Right. Right. Uh, anyway, High Seas Rally. And that is going to be at Motorfest on the 24th. And I'll tell you what else is going to happen at Motorfest. Tell me, tell me. Coming up next, we're going to mm -hmm. talk to Rob right. Schwellinger. Mm-hmm. He is our rodeo captain. He is going to put the games together. He's going to tell you all about the motorcycle rodeo madness. We're talking about a biker rodeo. We're and you know what? It's been such a long time since we've had just a cool old-fashioned biker rodeo exactly. style thing here. With all the cool old games that you know yep. and love. That's yep. it's sort of been forgotten. And you know what? We haven't forgotten them because right. Rob's going to do them. You're going to be there. You're going to yes. see it. It's going to be the most fun you can possibly have with, with your, clothes your clothes on. on. Thank there you, you very much. Thank you very much. Exactly right. So watch for that. And also, you know, uh, we've got a charity involved in mm -hmm. Motorfest we'd like to talk mm -hmm. about. And they happen to be friends of that guy right there. Yes, sir. My good friend, uh, Wayne Witzak, is one of my dear buddies. And, of course, we're talking about the Florida Sheriff's Youth Ranch. They do so many things for our youth, uh, helping folks get started when they uh, find themselves in an unfortunate position. And I mean to tell you, uh, one of the the best charity uh, things that you can be involved in, Florida Sheriff's Youth Ranch. They do amazing works here in our local community, and we certainly uh, are proud to have those guys on board with us. Yep, we're going to send a kid to camp as part mm -hmm. of Motifest, and you can be a part of that. So nice. July, don't forget. July 24th, put it on your day planner. Just write the whole day off. Come spend out with me and all of our biker brothers and sisters at Moto Fest. Yes. What say we get into it, Dave? Any further ado, let's I do think, it. I think we have no further ado. Let's. Let's do it. Hey, McFly. It's me, Tom Wilson. You're watching Born to Ride. You were born, face it, so ride right thank you god bless god bless america god bless up oh, get out of here
July 24th, it's coming. Born to Ride's Great American Moto Fest. Hey, it's Debbie with Born to Ride. Tune in every Thursday, 7 to 8 p.m. on the Boss Hog Radio, a fast hour of good talk, good biker talk, what you really want to hear. That's right, folks. You, we do welcome audience participation. I'm Fester Jenkins. Mama Dukes isn't in the studio this evening. In the studio, though, we do have Rob from R&R. &R. Thank you. Years past, you worked with Easy Riders. Well, we raced with Easy Riders. Okay. And, and uh, what it was is I was the, I, I, I raced my own team. Uh, I started with Tampa Bay Ray. I ended up with Gary Friel and some other people. So I was in it for eight years, uh, hands-on. And then uh, I got out of it completely. And then 18 years later, they called me up and asked me if I wanted to be the field boss again. So two years ago, I took over that job again. So I'm tied up with that. And it's been, uh, rodeos are great. You know, I've been doing it all my life. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. You, they'll find out July 24th. <laughs> I was about to say, are you going to be doing the radio on July 24th? Yep, I'm going to be running the show out on the field. And I also got uh, two trikes I'm bringing in and a couple of solo bikes to pull with. So I'm going to let some you know, friends and guests uh, pull, the uh, pull on the trike. Oh, and, that'll uh, be awesome. Yeah, and I'm also going to run it down the track a couple times because it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, and uh, this evening we're going to talk about uh, a little bit more about that uh, Great American Moto Fest. You know, where motorcycles, custom rods, trucks, vans, just uh, anything that's got wheels on it. This is an invitational event, especially because it's the first one. We want people to come out and you know feel comfortable trying to, to do some stuff in, in the rodeo. We're going to set the sled puller up to where it's real light. We're going to have like an 800,000, 1,200 pound class bike. So you can come out with your street bike and put some we got some weight for you we'll strap it to the back of the bike and you get a chance to pull the sled and uh it's gonna it's you know we'll, we can adjust the sled as, as much as we want you know so we can make it easy we can make it real hard uh we'll make it easy so everybody gets a chance to feel how it is and if they want to come back a second or third round we can tighten it up a little bit more and we can stop them wherever we want if we have to <laughs> well that's awesome that's so cool yeah. now with you working uh with easy rider and doing the rodeos and things like that uh speaking of easy rider we're talking. We've got Dave Nichols, oh, okay. our very own Born to Ride editor, who did a number of years with Easy Rider. Correct, Dave? I did. In fact, I have a great story about Rob. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm excited. I, I do. Give us the dirt. Give us the dirt, so, Dave. Dirty I, I Dave. Want you to imagine this. Imagine that you go to an Easy Rider's bike show the wonderful custom bike shows that we used to do. And you walk in and there's hundreds of bikes to look at, beautiful mm -hmm. choppers and stuff, right? But then you see over here in this giant hall, there's a thing that looks like someone picked up a garage <laughs> and put it inside this big building and it's got like a little a-frame you know and it's got all this old memorabilia inside and old oil cans and there's magazine memorabilia all over the walls and there's rob working on two iconic motorcycles this is when we wanted to restore the captain america and billy choppers from easy rider the movie what? And so you could actually walk up to Rob, who would like have, you know, something like, you know, he'd have the, the, the outer primary off of one of the bikes and his hands are all full of oil and grease and he's trying to put, and you could walk up and go, hey, what you doing? <laughs> and, he'd, and he'd stop and talk to you and tell you all about the project and how he completely restored these bikes so they would be ready to take on the road for the for the motorcycle rodeos and the bike shows and all that stuff and man that was a cool deal that was that the best job i ever up. had and <laughs> man you know i don't know how many people you talk to on a weekend rob but man that was cool to see those iconic choppers and you had them all apart and you're tinkering on them and putting them back together <laughs> absolutely i got i got two of my trikes we got one at tampa Tampa Bay race trikes, so there'll be three trikes there for sure, and this is just a real early count. But we're setting the bikes up for solo pullers and stuff like that, so we're going to put on a real good show for them. And uh, Tampa Bay Ray, he lives across the pond, or lives across the other side in, uh, of the East Coast. Uh, he'll be here for the rodeo also. So we'll have his trike. I don't think he's going to be riding it, but 
uh, it'll be here and you get to see Ray. And the, the whole day is going to be so entertaining because uh, there's an, uh, there's somewhere over 200 uh, street rods, hot rods, trucks, whatever you want to call them, that are going to be here also. So it's not just motorcycle rodeo. It's going to be a complete day of all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Well, now, Rob, okay, so give us a rundown of kind of what you're thinking from the activities of the rodeo, how that's going to go. Well, on. Rob, probably about, well, we got a sled coming in from Zellwood, uh, Florida. It's the uh, Antique Florida Sled Pullers. Now, this is a uh, transfer sled. That has somebody that rides on it. It has a gear-driven box to drive it back to the, to the starting line after we pull with it. But there's somebody on it that's a brake man, so it's real, real care, real safe. But we can adjust it for, you know, a, a small motorcycle all the way up to a 300 horsepower tractor. And we might have some tractors here to also. Probably, I told the guys instead of, you know, about six to eight tractors would be fine. Yeah. The garden variety with, you know, some. You know, small hemis, in right? Like <laughs> but we're gonna, you know, we're gonna start at nine o'clock uh, or something like that, and then we're gonna practice, and then later that afternoon we'll start the show and we'll do two rounds, and then uh, at the end of the day, if there's some, you know, some more people who want to pull or whatever, we'll just line them up and let them keep going till it gets dark. Okay. We're also having a just for kicks contest. We're doing, the, which is really a cool contest now because all the young sportster guys all got kickstarters on their bike and they're. They think Grandpa's a punk now. Okay. <laughs> you know? He's like, wait a minute, son. You know, I kick my pan head. <laughs> so the ki the kickstart the kickstart contest is really fun to see. Uh, we'll do the barrel race, which is real entertaining because anybody with a sport sport bike uh, can come out and play and do that. Uh, I think Roscoe's going to be here with his outhouses, so you can. Do I've, I've heard pull. that uh, outhouse rumor. pulling. Yeah, that's a good yep. rumor. But uh, we're just we're going to try to entertain everybody. When uh, we take a break, that's when the car guys will be giving out trophies in the bike show. MCs and all that will go on. As soon as that's done, we'll we'll go to a final round, probably like four or five o'clock, and then finish out the afternoon with the bike show, with the sled, with the rodeo, and then, uh, like I said, if uh, people want to come out and practice or play or whatever, we'll let them go out there and try. Now, what are some of the events in the rodeo? Uh, we talked about the barrel racing. Well, but we're gonna, I mean we're going to do the um, the uh, weenie bike because everybody seems to like the weenie bike contest. Okay. We're doing a keg push. We're going to make it work. Uh, if the guy, if the keg goes crazy, the guy don't have to get off the bike and chase it. We'll have somebody that can line it up for him because we we're looking for new new people, you know. So come out and try. Don't you know? Don't be you know. Don't, don't be bashful. Be if you want some help with trying to get something set up to pull, uh, a, a solo bike's real easy. All you need is a chain drive because belts don't last very long, and a, a carved up tire so you can take an old Goodyear tire, I mean the old uh, Dunlop tire, and carve it up to put it on the dirt. And I can help you guys with anything like that. The smaller shops, the a Harley shops. Anybody wants to get involved, we want you to come out here and try to practice. A lot of the guys with the newer bikes, they got you know 150, 160 horsepower, but they don't want to go out in the dirt and spin it around. So we're going to have a couple games they can play on the pavement. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, that sounds yeah. like a plan there, no, no yeah, doubt. No <laughs> doubt, you know, because they'll all try something if it's easy. Yeah, you know, get them get them started. Rob, can you do the slow race? <laughs> oh yeah, the slow race will be there too. I got a list of stuff over here, but I just can't read right now. No. But, uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, we're going to have, have the whole you know we're going to have the whole lineup of games. I want to thank Rod from R&R. R&R Cycles, 352 206 Call me up if you got some questions. Uh, we'll, get, we'll help you get set up so you can come out and play with us. Our children come from different backgrounds with different stories. They learn time-honored values like the importance of faith, hard work, and that an education is something no one can take away. They learn that respect begins with themselves and should be given to others. The Florida Sheriff's Youth Ranches, where kids learn laugh and dream with people who refuse to give up on them with your donation today we can give them a brighter tomorrow Does the time go dave where does the time okay. go another hour down of born to ride live with your host dave and dave right here i tell you what what a wonderful job we have telling the world about motorcycles yes it doesn't indeed, get folks. and don't forget to think motorcycle think exactly it, think right it, live it love it like it Yep. Thanks to our friends at Rubenstein Law. Uh, big shout out to those guys for uh, for supporting that uh, that effort and uh, 
just getting the word out. You know, we kind of started the show on a down note. I mean, we had we lost some some brothers over the over the holiday. Uh, some close, some I mean, they're all close. Um, but we we just definitely want you folks to be thinking when you're getting behind the wheel of anything. Uh, don't drink 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 and drive. Don't drink and uh, drive impaired. And uh, just think motorcycles, man, because we are everywhere. Damn and, right. Uh, you know, just taking a second look and and giving that little bit of extra effort uh, can save a life. And that's again what this message is all about. Yes, indeed. And hey, don't forget to pick up your issue of Born to Ride magazine. The June issue will be out soon, and it's all about Father's Day. I can well. say no more. I can say no more. No more, huh? Come on, just just give us a little bit more. Uh, right, Nefari really? Nefari Nefarious got something good in there this month? He does. Nefarious has another kick-ass article for you. We got the story of Gary Francis uh, mm -hmm. about Father's Day. We got a little mm -hmm. something about Denver's Choppers. We got a little something about Rooster's Van and Chopper. Oh, um, my boys over at Rooster's yeah. Rod Shop. Love those guys. Yep, yep. We've got uh, the Gary Francis story. We've got... Uh, a whole thing about um, well, about us that that we do this wonderful hey. thing that we do. Hey, you know, that and we do uh, that we do, buddy. Oh so well, that's right. Mm -hmm. And also, hey, we want to we want to say congratulations to Ron Galetti's son yeah. graduating high school. Way to go, kid! What a great family oh. photo they had on Facebook. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And uh, it's so funny how. Just this guy was knee high to a grasshopper. Now he's graduating high school and uh, just God, he's got to be six foot three <laughs> baseball playing dude, man. So, hey, congrats, uh, congrats uh, to the whole Galetti family, man. They look good. And we will see you again next week, right? Yes, here. We will. Born to Ride Live. Thanks so much. You guys have a great week. Thank Motors.センキュー すごいイメージ的なものはあるんだけども、具体的に例えば何みたいなとか、それから何にインスパイアされるとか、そういうことはないし、まあ、絵ももちろん描かないし。なんかその時の気持ちで鉄を切ったり、身を削って作ったものな
Check out the all-new ThornsRide.com with radio, TV, industry, adventure, events, magazines, social media, and much more. It's the all-new ThornsRide.com.